The class of 98 had a strong influence on games development for the years that followed. These three classic stealth games began a new design trend that embraced systemic stealth-based gameplay. All of it presented with the very best 3D graphics modern consoles and PCs had to offer. The 2D world had been left behind, but it hadn't been forgotten. And 2D stealth games are now not just popular in the commercial gaming sector, but on a multitude of online and mobile platforms. But where did 2D stealth truly begin as a subgenre? Is it as recent as Curve Studios' Stealth Bastard or Clay Entertainment's Mark of the Ninja? Do we look towards the end of the proto stealth period when 2D gameplay was more of an industry standard? Or perhaps as another kind of video game altogether? Hello. Hello. Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake was the first commercial video game to incorporate a significant number of proto-stealth gameplay features. Released in 1990, it's arguably the first comprehensive stealth game, marking the end of proto-stealth development with a range of evolved gameplay concepts. Controlled from a top-down perspective in stark 8-bit graphics, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake made the most of a flat space by dividing its environment up into distinct squares. It was not just the first comprehensive stealth game, it was the first comprehensive 2D stealth game. But was it an influential 2D stealth game? Could we make a case for it having inspired the birth of the 2D stealth subgenre? Well, it's certainly clear that Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake used themes and gameplay concepts its creators wanted to explore further. It's not difficult to argue that it played a crucial role in how its sequel, Metal Gear Solid, successfully adapted stealth-based mechanisms, specifically the Soliton Radar and Enemy Awareness modes. In the aftermath of its release, 2D video games enjoyed a profitable few years of fighting, racing, platforming and adventure, but not much in the way of sneaking. Even games with protagonists who you would have thought of as potentially stealthy characters, like the ninja Shinobi, one of Sega's early mascots, were continually thrusted into their own brands of action-driven gameplay. Stealth-based gaming seemed to have barely been acknowledged with the advent of Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. The ideas presented by Kojima and his team simply didn't catch on. As for its part in the creation of modern 2D stealth games, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake's impact remains negligible. It's fair to say that none, if any, of the modern 2D stealth games have intentionally followed the templates laid down by Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. The recent boom in 2D stealth game development occurred more than 20 years after its release, far too long a time span to suggest that Kojima's early work was a key factor. Regardless of whether or not we view Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake as a 2D stealth game that played a pivotal role in how future 2D stealth games would be designed, what remains clear is that it was the first comprehensive 2D stealth game and, for the years that followed its creation at least, it would be the only 2D stealth game. Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake was seemingly ahead of its time. The careful, considered approach in stealth-based gameplay didn't mesh with the fast-paced, mainstream action trends that were being marketed to young gamers throughout the early 1990s. It certainly didn't help that, at the time, children were perceived to be the industry's core consumers. However, the status quo would soon be challenged by new technologies, maturing audiences, and aspiring game developers. Two such developers were Lorne Lanning and Sherry McKenna. In 1994, they founded Oddworld Inhabitants, a studio dedicated to the interactive narratives that were only possible through the video game medium. In 1997, they released their first video game, Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey. At a glance, Abe's Odyssey clearly follows the base template of a platformer game, albeit with more thoughtful puzzle-solving than gutsy action. 
Its protagonist, Abe, is a Mudokun slave on Rupture Farms who's making a desperate bid for his freedom and attempting to rescue his fellow slaves in the process. Abe is pretty much defenceless. He can't fight or shoot or dodge bullets and one hit is all it takes to kill him. A far cry indeed from the action-packed ludo-narrative of most 2D platformers. Abe's Odyssey's platforming environment is partitioned neatly into screens. Each enemy presents a challenge to be avoided or neutralised, sometimes complicated by the presence of Mudokun slaves the player is expected to rescue. Threats include a range of passive obstacles such as motion detectors, death pits, mines, electric barriers, and of course the legendary meat grinders. The sentient foes, however, are more interesting. Specifically the aggressive scrabs, obedient slogs, and the slightly less intelligent slicks. They're interesting because, much like the soldiers players face in Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, these enemies have three basic states of awareness. The passive state, the suspicious state, and the active state. There are no visual indicators to show an enemy becoming aware of Abe's presence. No exclamation points or question marks. Instead, the game uses audio cues in the form of grunts, growls, speech, movement noises, and music. This less emphatic, toolless approach teaches players to read enemies and understand their reactions to player activity, while building on the game's atmosphere. A core part of the gameplay in Abe's Odyssey relies on the player being able to hide from, avoid, and neutralise these enemies. They all seem to have excellent hearing, as players have to use a sneaking button to bypass foes who are asleep or whose backs are turned. Running or walking in the presence of these enemies is a reliable way to get yourself killed. Abe can also hide in shadowy spots throughout the environment, leading to tense standoffs with patrolling guards. If he's detected by machine gun toting slicks, security devices, or hostile creatures, the only real option players have is to make a dash for it to the next screen, or reach higher ground to avoid getting caught or shot by any pursuers. Abe's Odyssey fits the criteria of a 2D stealth game, but it also brings something new to the stealth-based experience. Modern stealth games typically allow players to manipulate their environments and, by extension, the obstacles within those environments, including enemies. Abe's Odyssey was the first stealth game to introduce a more direct means of exploitation. By chanting for a few seconds, Abe can literally possess the body of a nearby slig, giving the player control over characters who are both armed and expendable. A possessed guard is limited to simple movements. They can't jump, pass through doors to new areas, or throw objects, but they can be used to gun down their allies, trigger deadly traps, or simply explore the local area. They can also talk, which gives players various options for further environmental manipulation. As a possessed slig, Abe can use voice commands to control slogs, canine-like creatures that will attack other guards when ordered to do so. Abe can also warn his mother and friends to duck before the slig under his control opens fire in their direction upon unsuspecting foes. After players have exhausted their use for any slig under Abe's control, they can walk it into a trap or simply opt for an explosive self-destruct move that returns Abe's consciousness to his body. This possession ability, as powerful as it is, has clear limitations. Enemies are smarter than they look. If a slig spots another becoming possessed or acting strangely due to Abe's control, it will gun down its comrade without hesitation. The possession chant Abe uses will instantly alert any enemies on screen, who will cry for help and attempt to find Abe before the chant takes effect. If a targeted slig is in the presence of Mudokun slaves, attempting possession is a bit of a gamble, as the slicks get very trigger-happy under duress. Furthermore, there are chant suppressors dotted throughout the environment that prevent Abe from using his powers, so it's necessary to dispose of these devices first if possible. The concept of manipulating enemies wasn't new to stealth games when Abe's Odyssey came along in 1997. In fact, it's a core gameplay feature of one of the earlier proto-stealth games, Castle Wolfenstein, where you can threaten guards into submission and pat them down for useful items. 
However, Abe's Odyssey was the first stealth game to truly run with this idea, giving players the means to literally control enemies and, in so doing, alter the danger levels of their environment and solve problems. At this point, it should be clear that there are significant aesthetic, narrative and gameplay differences between Abe's Odyssey and its 2D stealth game predecessor, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. However, both games use stealth-based gameplay and narratives as core mechanisms for player investment. Both games feature protagonists who have a strong interest in staying undetected, both games contain enemies that are capable of passive and active behaviour patterns. This being said, there are entire levels in Abe's Odyssey where there is little to no stealth-based gameplay at all, which, in the eyes of many stealth game enthusiasts, might make it an unusual candidate for membership of the 2D stealth subgenre. Nevertheless, the arguments for its inclusion, and the inclusion of its sequel, are compelling. Abe's Odyssey's sequel, Oddworld Abe's Exodus, is a refinement of the systems that made Abe's Odyssey so interesting. More puzzles, more ways to interact with Abe's Muddicon friends, more tools to combat the Sligs with, and more enemy types to possess and exploit. As far as the stealth-based gameplay goes, there is just as much emphasis on timing your moves across a screen littered with patrolling guards and creatures, and this is put to good use in building the tension. Additionally, Abe is given the power to turn himself invisible for a short amount of time, which usually means a dash through otherwise impassable hostile territory. While Oddworld Inhabitants were the first developer to explore stealth-based gameplay in a 2D platformer setting, and both Abe's Odyssey and Abe's Exodus could be described as 2D stealth games, Lanning and McKenna had always been open about their foremost desires to tell new kinds of stories. Stealth-based gameplay was ultimately just one of the many processes in Abe's ludo-narrative. The Mudokun's sneakiness and stealthy approaches, at least in the first two Oddworld games, gave us insight into their characters, their vulnerability, and their preference to avoid conflict wherever possible. Another interesting game in our quest to understand 2D stealth, this time played from an isometric perspective, is Commandos Behind Enemy Lines. Created by Pyro Studios, released in 1998, and set against the backdrop of World War II, the game's roots are firmly in the real-time strategy, or RTS, genre. Unlike its forebears, notably Command & Conquer and Zed, it features a decidedly tactical, stealth-based approach to its missions. Players control a specialised team of six commandos whose tactics rely on being able to infiltrate enemy strongholds and strike quickly. Only a couple of these soldiers are available for each mission, but each of these troops has his own talents players can put to good use against the enemy. While all of your men are armed and certainly dangerous, they have to complete their missions without being detected by enemy forces. If any member of your team dies, you fail the mission. Their skill sets are diverse and interdependent, meaning you'll need to use every member of your commando squad in order to accomplish each mission's objectives. From the beginning, the player is instilled with a sense that every life under their command matters, and that direct hostilities against a significantly larger, ostensibly more powerful enemy force are to be avoided if at all possible. There is no rush to action, no building strongholds, no massive army you can generate to destroy your foes. You get a couple of soldiers, some equipment, and a commander's overview of the operation zone. Every choice in commandos behind enemy lines could take players a step closer towards finishing a mission, or get their commando squad killed or captured. Enemies have sweeping vision cones, which can be seen by selecting individual guards, but they also respond to noise from firearms or explosions. Getting close and taking them down with a knife is preferable to, for instance, blowing them up and drawing attention from nearby patrols. If killing at range, it pays to wait until they are secluded enough that their bodies won't be immediately noticed by their comrades. Pyro Studios designed enemy vision cones with two ranges in which your team could be spotted. Dark green areas of the cone are only dangerous if your team members are standing up. As long as they're lying prone, it's possible for them to avoid being seen. 
If your team members are spotted in the light green segment of vision cones, they can be detected whether they're lying prone or not. It goes without saying that walls, buildings and other obstacles can provide cover, and these are especially useful when hiding from patrolling vehicles. As with previous 2D stealth games, enemy soldiers have three states of awareness. Passive, suspicious and active. An interesting twist on their active behaviour is that they can, in favourable circumstances, attempt to capture any commandos they come across rather than kill them outright. This means it's possible for another unseen squad member to quickly take out enemy soldiers before things can escalate or, failing that, rescue their captured friend from a nearby stockade. In other circumstances, perhaps after your commandos have already taken out a number of enemy troops on the map or caused other kinds of trouble, guards are less inclined to take your men prisoner, and violent action is inevitable. More often than not, an alerted enemy will attempt to raise the alarm, and that's when things get tricky. Reinforcements are called and start patrolling the map in an effort to locate your team, Every guard, except for the sentries looking after high-value assets, will adapt suspicious behaviour patterns, breaking their patrol routes and investigating any signs of player activity. It is not possible to cancel the active status of enemies once they discover your commando's presence, making the prospect of staying undetected all the more desirable. Various tricks and traps remain open to players depending on which of the six commando units they have in the field. These include commandeering enemy artillery, silent melee kills, using an acoustic decoy to pull enemies out of patrol patterns, and even more direct methods such as the use of explosives and sniping enemies from long distances. Abe's Odyssey, Abe's Exodus and Commandos Behind Enemy Lines are important titles when we look back at 2D stealth game history. Between them, they carry many of the ideas we now see in modern 2D stealth games. The natural question is, why did we not see more in the way of 2D stealth games in the years that followed if Abe's Odyssey, Abe's Exodus and Commandos Behind Enemy Lines were so well received? Well, in the same year that Oddworld Abe's Exodus and Commandos Behind Enemy Lines were released, stealth-based games entered a new era of development and popularity but not from a 2D gameplay perspective. Tenchu Stealth Assassins, Metal Gear Solid, and Thief the Dark Project were also released in 1998. These games' approaches to stealth-based gameplay and focus on full 3D environments would eclipse Oddworld Inhabitants and Pyro Studios' work. Once again, 2D stealth games would have to wait for their turn in the light. In Chapter 2, we will examine the obscure 2D stealth games of the mid-2000s and ask why very few developers seemed keen to make one. I'd like to offer a special thanks to my supporters on Patreon and on YouTube. You've been patient, and there's more coming. If you liked what you've seen here and want to see more, you should hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to go one step further and become a Stealth Doc sponsor, you can pledge a dollar or five on my Patreon page. Sharing, liking and recommending this video are great ways to help out too. Thank you very much for watching, you'll hear from me again soon.